Good morning, my dear viewers. It is good to see you again. This is Aaron Brown, Foundations Tutoring, coming back to you. And boy, has it been a long time, but I'm so excited to be back and so excited to be discussing this high yield topic of lung volumes for the USMLE Step 1. Now, if you are new to this channel, what my subscribers will tell you is that there are two recommended ways to watch this video. The first, and my preferred way, is to sit down with a pen and pad in front of you and get ready to take notes because this is about to be high yield. And the second recommended way to watch the video is to sit back, relax with a hot cup of tea and enjoy what I hope is a helpful, high yield, and interesting discussion of a very important topic for step one, the lung volumes and spirometry. So without further ado, I'll allow myself to take over. What you're about to see is a recording of a private one-on-one -on -one lecture with a student where we discuss this topic in detail and uh, well enough from me please enjoy the show so the average the average um total lung capacity is four to six liters okay and what we're going to talk about is that there are things that will change in the lungs that will decrease that. There's things that will change in the lungs to increase that. Okay. For example, when we think about a patient with COPD, someone who's trapping air in their lungs, what will happen to the volume of their increase, right? Good, good. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So um, that's going to kind of form the basis of everything we do going forward. So uh, the first thing that we talk about when we start with the lungs, we're going to focus on physiology. So important is to talk about the lung volumes, the lung volumes. OK, and so um, what is this a graph of? What do we call this um, graph that we're looking at here? This is our spirometry. Spirometry. Okay. And spirometry is really just a measure of how much volume that your patient can move. Okay. Breathing in, breathing out, taking a deep breath in and exhaling uh, sort of the maximum that they can exhale. That, that is what we're measuring with spirometry. Okay, now we can only measure what the patient is able to move. Okay, and so why do I say that? Well, when we exhale and we blow out all the air that's in our lungs, there's still a bit of air in there, right? We need to keep a little bit of air inside to be able to keep those airways open and, and keep our lungs from completely collapsing. Okay, so our patients can't move that little bit of air that's left over. They're only able to, to move what the lungs can um, sort of realistically put out. And so when we look at uh, the volumes here, the, there's one volume that we really can't measure. Okay. And that is uh, the dead space in our lung or the residual volume. Residual volume. This is the volume that our patients are not able to exhale. Okay, um, but yeah, so we're we're looking at this uh, this diagram here. This is our spirometry. Whenever we see a diagram, we have to look first at the axes. And so here on the bottom, we have time. Right on the x axis, on the y axis, we have volume and this is mls per kg. All right. So when we go from zero, nothing in our lungs to uh, our lungs being completely full, what do we call that volume? Total lung capacity, excellent. And what did we say is sort of an average total lung capacity? <laughs> yeah. 
Yep, yep, so, yep. Four, five, six liters. Four to six liters is going to be our average for you know most healthy people, and that it depends on your size, it depends on your age, and a number of different factors. But anywhere in there is sort of our normal. Excellent. So total lung capacity four to six liters. Now, uh, as we look at this tracing, we see that there's sort of this. Um, almost like the the waves of the ocean sort of uh, in and out in and out and so what does what do these waves represent yeah just our tidal volume you can imagine the waves of the ocean the tides coming in and out right this is our tidal volume and th this is the volume uh that when we are at rest um uh, as you are, as you are sort of sitting here with me, I hope that you're not too um, stressed out. That you're taking deep breaths. You're just at rest, right? You're relaxed. You're just breathing in and out, uh, without sort of conscious control. That's our tidal volume. Okay. Now, uh, uh, we see that at one point we go beyond the tidal volume and we go all the way to the top of total lung capacity. And so, as we look from the sort of peak of our tidal volume all the way to, to the peak of our total lung capacity. There's sort of a reserve that we can inspire, right? So what are we gonna call this volume? IRV, excellent, yes, it's our inspiratory reserve volume. It's a reserve that we can inspire. We don't use this most of the time. If we're trying to blow up balloons, or it's our birthday and we're blowing out candles, we might sort of inspire, take a deep breath. <gasps> that's the inspiratory reserve that you just heard me use. Okay, that's the inspiratory reserve volume. Uh, now, if so we must have a sort of comparison to this in terms of expiration, right? So if we look below the trough, whenever we talk about something sort of going up and down, the peak is the highest point, the trough is the lowest point. So as we look below the trough, there is a volume that goes from the trough of the tidal volume all the way down to sort of the maximum that we can exhale. All right, so what would this volume be? It's just, right, it's just the, the um, reverse of the inspiratory, right? Expiratory reserve volume, excellent, excellent. Okay, so those, that's kind of covering our, our five major volumes. We talked about our residual volume. As we go up, we have our expiratory reserve, our tidal, our inspiratory reserve, and then the max is our total lung capacity. Okay, now there's more that we need to kind of consider because when we talk about our patients who have COPD, who have, you know, a, a restrictive lung disease, we don't want to just know the inspiratory reserve volume. We want to know what is the total amount that our patients can inspire. What's that total amount? Well, um, if we wanna know sort of the total amount that they can inspire, we would start from the trough of tidal volume and we would go all the way to the peak of IRV, right? And so what would this volume be? This is the max that we can inspire. Inspiratory capacity, excellent, excellent. This is this is what we can inspire, and uh, we can say the same thing for the uh, expiratory as well. Okay, so let's just move on. There's a few more volumes, but I don't want to spend too too much time on this. So we talked about our IRV, our inspiratory capacity, um, our functional residual capacity is our ERV plus our residual volume. Okay. And, and that's it for our volumes, okay? So if we cover our inspiratory capacity and our FRC, that gives us our total lung capacity. Uh, our vital capacity, very important vital capacity is all of our IRV plus our TV plus our ERV, okay? It's everything that we are using. It's everything except the residual volume, right? It's all the air that the patient can move is the vital capacity. Okay, any questions on this? Great. Let's keep moving. Um, so, what uh, we we I'm sure you've heard this term before, an FEV1. What is an FEV1? One second. Nope. Yep. Yeah, you got it. One second. Right. 
Um, so if, if we're asking our patient, again, kind of like blowing out candles, right? You have to blow out as much as you can in one second. And so usually you'll see that there's a sharp, there's a sort of a sharp um, drop off in terms of the, vo in the volume of the lungs, right? We're blowing off very, very quickly. Okay. Now in certain diseases, we lose the ability to blow out quickly. If we don't have a good sort of elasticity of our lungs, then all of our alveoli will sort of stay distended. If our alveoli are distended, the air is not leaving, right? The air gets trapped. Emphysema. Excellent, 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 excellent. Um, and in, in uh, sort of conversely, if we have a condition where there's more fibrosis of the lungs, the lungs will become more restrictive. And when our patients exhale as quickly as they can, they actually exhale, um, they have more FEV1 than someone sort of who had emphysema and COPD. Okay, so it can kind of go either way. All right, great. So let's keep moving on here. Um, you know, in